Hello and welcome back to another Attack of the Beat Team tutorial. My name is Classic Tim, and today we are going to be going over how to fly an Attack of the Beat Team. Now we're just not going to be talking about how to kill a bat and morph into one and start flying, or flying around. We're actually talking about how to make your character fly without having to morph into anything using advanced genetics. Now this is one thing that everyone needs to know when playing Attack of the Beat Team. This is something that I would really recommend doing early because it just makes your life a whole lot easier. It's pretty well known how to do it right now, but there's still a lot of people who just don't know how to do it. So hopefully this tutorial will clear everything up, and within just, you know, less than an hour, uh, you'll be able to fly and attack the B team. So, to get started, you're going to need some source of power. Um, I recommend using a steam dynamo if you are just starting out, because they're easy to make. Um, this they just take some copper and they're easy to power. All you need is some coal. Um, I do not recommend using the uh, advanced genetics coal generator. I mean, um, the combustion generator from ge advanced genetics. You don't get nearly as much power out of your coal. Um, like, not even close. So do not use this. It, it's not good at all. So, but just for the sake of this tutorial, we're going to be using a creative energy cell just because I am on creative. And it'll just make it easier so we don't have to worry about power while I'm telling you how to do this. So there's a bunch of machines that you're going to have to make um, which make up advanced genetics. We're not going to be talking about every single machine that advanced genetics has, just the ones that you need to be able to fly. So the first thing you're going to have to make is a scraper. Um, this is what you use to get the skin scales off of mobs to get their traits. Um, in this case, we're going to be doing a bat because we want to get the uh, skin scales from a bat so we can fly just like a bat. So I'll go ahead and make this. It just takes two stone rods, which you, which you can make some from cobblestone, and an iron ingot. Not hard at all. You're probably going to have to make a couple of these because their durability runs out pretty quick. Um, the next thing you're going to have to make is a magnifier. Um, this is just a crafting item. You don't really have to use it for anything. Uh, you need a stone tool rod and a piece of glass for that. So you can just grab this and put it in here, surrounded by iron. And then you get a DNA analyzer. This is the first machine that you're going to have to make, and this is where you put the skin scales. So let's go ahead and put this in a little system here, connected to the leadstone wire here. And you can see it's gathering power and there's a little interface here. So this is where you put the skin scale. So let's go ahead and spawn in a bat. Um, let's do this underground somewhere so that way the bat doesn't fly away. Or I'll make a little house for it. Because you do not want to be chasing a bat around, so if you do uh, catch a bat, try and contain it before you um, start trying to skin it. So we'll just go in here. Sorry if it's a little dark. Let's get a torch. Okay, so now we'll just go ahead and spawn a bat, and all you have to do is take this uh, scraper here and right-click on the bat. It'll take a small amount of damage every time you do it, so I recommend just completely killing the bat, get as many skin scales as possible, and actually you do morph into it. So if you don't have a bat already, you can still get it this way. And we'll just pick up all these skin scales. we got plenty. Um, this will definitely be enough to get the fly gene out of. So let's morph back into myself, and we can get going. So, next you put the skin scales in the DNA analyzer, and it is extremely slow. We'll get to how to speed this up um, a little bit later. Okay, so now that that's finished, you get a cell, which is a cell of a bat, because we used uh, some skin scales uh, from a bat. And you also get an organic drop. This is kind of like a waste material. You don't really use it for anything, but you can put it in your steam dynamo, and it produces a, just a little bit of power, so you don't have to use quite so much coal. So let's go ahead and take this cell, because we're going to need it um, in the next recipe here. This is another crafting item that you're going to need to make. Um, you take four of those cells, it doesn't matter what type, and you put it around a book, and you get this basic DNA dictionary. Uh, you need this for most of the... Uh, machines that you have to make next so you're going to need a lot of cells just to make the machines so it's good if you don't have a lot of bat to use some kind of other mob to make these cells to make the book because you can use any type you know just like a cow or sheep or anything like that so that you don't have to go running around looking for more, for more bats so let's go ahead and make this and put it here um, which is just some iron ingots a hopper 
and then that basic DNA dictionary, which makes a DNA extractor. You get, you take this, and this is the next step of the process. So what this does, it actually extracts the DNA out of the cell. So let's go ahead and make another cell. Okay, so that's done. Um, if you're following along with this tutorial, I'm actually going to put an annotation up right now, and that's going to link uh, you further in the video just to where I talk about the overclockers for this to make it faster, so that way you can make those before you start doing all the rest of this stuff, but I'm just going to talk about that um, after this. So just make those before if you're following along, or if you're just watching the whole video first, just continue watching. Okay, so let's grab this cell of a bat and we'll put it in the DNA extractor. And again, this is going to take a little bit longer because it's uh, not overclocked yet, but it's a little, definitely faster than the um, analyzer. So this gives us a helix encrypted. Um, so we're actually going to have to decrypt it. Now, if you notice the little ID value there where it's AF17BCF17AAA, um, that actually will tell you what the cell, it, uh, what the DNA is before you even decrypt it. So if you're looking for a specific gene, then um, you can actually do it without having to decrypt it first. Uh, this will definitely have a fly gene on it because that um, is not a basic gene data value. But we won't worry about that right now. So now we have to actually decrypt it, which we can do in a um, DNA decryptor, obviously, which just takes another one of these books, some more iron, and a piece of paper. So we'll go ahead and make this, and put it right next to it, and then we can put the helix in there. Okay, so once that's done, um, now you have a normal helix, and it has a fly and a basic gene on it. So that means that you can get fly or basic out of this. And what a basic gene does is it kind of just... Um, it doesn't do anything specifically, but you need it to make the other genes. So now that we have a fly helix, um, we're going to have to do some more processing on it to actually uh, get the um, gene out of it, because right now there's two genes on it. And we do that with the DNA splitter. So this will split the gene that we want out of uh, the rest of the stuff. So we'll put that in there, and you get a couple options. You get a fly option or a basic gene option. If it's just a basic gene, or if it's just fly, then you just click on that one. But this time we actually have a choice. Um, since we're going for fly, we'll go ahead and click fly and let that process. Okay, so now that that's done, we get another organic drop, which again, you can use to produce more power. And also we get an actual raw gene, fly. Um, now, you'd think that we're getting close, but we still actually have a lot to do, because this is not... A completed gene. We need a completed gene. This is just a raw gene. Um, so that means that we're going to need the DNA breeder, which you use to breed the gene to get more of it, so that way uh, it's enough to actually give you the trait. So we'll go ahead and make this. I'm just going to break these so that I don't keep on right-clicking on the wrong one. Uh, put the breeder right here. And then when we put this in here, it's actually going to go in this slot, not this slot. And then you'll see breeding state, uh, 0 out of 28. Now this is where those basic genes come in, and this is where the length really comes with this mod. So every basic gene you put into this will, will give you 1 point, and every fly gene you put into this will give you 2 points. So you actually need to feed this gene, this fly gene, more genes... Um, 28 actually. Fly is actually the highest, the hardest one to make. The other ones are only like maybe 6, 12, but this one takes 28 uh, separate genes. So you're going to need to use all the rest of these skin scales doing the same process, except instead of putting the gene here, you're going to put the gene here. So I'll just go ahead and uh, put another one through the process so I can show you. Okay, so now we have another fly gene here, and when we put this one in this slot, it's going to process this, and then this is going to go up by two, since this is a fly gene. Um, if we only had a basic gene, then it would only go up by one. 
Okay, so I just went ahead and finished this up. So now we have a gene fly completed. So we've got a finished gene, and this gene is now ready to be injected into us so that we can get the trait of fly. So we'll go ahead and take that out of there. Um, but we're still going to need a couple more things to actually inject it in us. So let me just clear my hot bar a little bit here. So we have some space. And um, next we have to make the syringe. This is... Um, how you can inject it in yourself and you're actually going to need a total of six because you actually need these to make some other machines too. So we'll just go ahead and make all of these. Um, I actually didn't need to since I already put the syringes in here. But either way, uh, we need to make a centrifuge. Um, what this does this mixes your blood a little bit um, so that way you can put the, the gene in and out of it. So we'll go ahead and make this and put it right next to this. So now we take one of these syringes and we hold right click until it's um, totally charged up and then we let go and it'll give us blindness for a second and that'll take a sample of our blood. And then we centrifuge it. Okay, so now we have a centrifuged blood and um, now we have to actually combine the gene and our blood together and we need another machine to do that, which is right down here. So this takes a little bit of everything. It takes a couple more of these cells, it takes a syringe, and it takes one of these basic DNA dictionaries. Um, but this is a DNA combiner. And with this last machine, we can combine the syringe of blood that we just centrifuged and the gene. And once that's done, all we have to do is centrifuge it one more time and we are ready to inject ourselves with it. So before we do that, let's just go into um, survival mode here. Um, so I can't fly right now, but once I inject myself with this, um, I'll get a little nausea effect, and I will be able to fly in survival mode without having to turn into a bat or anything like that. Um, so that's pretty much it. There's a bunch of other genes that you can do. Um, I'll, I'll leave a link down in the description to the full list of all the genes that you can that you can do. But this one's definitely the most useful out of all of them because um, just being able to fly around it basically makes it like creative mode. Um, the the fly works just like creative mode actually. Um, double tap to uh, fly, shift to go down, space to go up, and when and then you're good. Um, so like I said before. Um, you make all that other stuff, or before you actually do all the processing, um, you should make these overclockers. Um, these make the machines go so much faster. Each machine can take a, um, a total of 16, so I recommend making enough for all of them, which takes 28 clocks and then um, 4 times 28 redstone, um, since it gives you 4 each. And that will give you a bunch of overclockers, and if you that will give you enough to put in um, 16 for every single one of these machines. So if you remember how um, uh, slow this machine was before, I've actually got some more skin scales over here. Um, you see how slow it's moving right now. If I put an overclock, um, a full stack of overclockers in here, you see it's actually already done. Uh, if I put another one in, almost instant. Don't even have to skip that. Um, so I definitely recommend making these before you go through processing all of them. So that's pretty much going to be the end of this episode. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the description and I'll be sure to answer them. I will see you guys next time.